It was David that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Another place he said, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Put your hands together and give God a praise. All over the world, the word hallelujah means praise the Lord. Can you shout hallelujah? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for giving us another chance to come together with other brothers and sisters and mingle and co-mingle our voices together to give you the praise that you are so worthy of. You are worthy, Lord. You have done great things in our lives and you are doing great things. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We magnify you here today. And our prayer is let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in earth, in this service, in our lives, even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, all that agree, would you say amen? amen. Lift your voice and shout glory to God three times. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Every praise. Every praise is to you, God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. We want our glory. Every praise. Every praise is to you, God. Sing hallelujah, Sing hallelujah to you, God. Glory hallelujah is to you, God. Every praise, every praise is to you, God. Every praise is to you, God. Every word of worship. We want to go every praise, every praise is to you, God. Sing hallelujah to you, God. Glory hallelujah is to you, God. Every praise, every praise is to you, God. Every praise, every praise. It's to you, God. Every word of worship, we want to go. Every praise, every praise is to you, God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to you, God. Glory hallelujah is to you, God. Every praise, every praise is to you, Every praise is to you, God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to you, God. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah to you, God. Glory, hallelujah is to you, God. Every praise, every praise, every praise. Yeah. 
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're my Savior. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. Yes, you are. 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 Every praise. Every praise. It's to you every word of worship every word of worship with one accord every praise 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 Every praise, 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 Every praise is to you, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Every praise belongs to you, God. Oh, yes, it does. Every praise belongs to you. You are our Savior. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. Praise your name, Lord.
Lord at all times. He's good. Yes, I will bless Him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Come on and bless Him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Put your hands together, come on and bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Don't you know that he's good? He's good. So good. So good. Real good. Real good. Each and every, Each day. And every day of my life. I'll bless the Lord for he Bless the Lord at all times. He's good. And I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He's a mighty good God. Come on and bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Jehovah Jireh, I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Don't you know that he's good? He's good. So good. So good. Real good. Real good. Each and every, Each and every day, day of my life. I'll bless the Lord for he's good. Bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Yes, I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He woke me up and I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Don't you know that he's good? He's good. So good. So good. Each and every day of my life, I'll bless the Lord, for He's good. Yes, I will bless Him, I will bless the Lord at all times, He's good. Yes, I will bless Him, I will bless the Lord at all times, He's good. Jehovah Rapha, I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Yeah, come on and bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Come on, come on, come on and bless him. I will bless the Lord. I will bless him. I will bless the Lord. I bless him. I will bless the Lord. I bless him. I will bless the Lord. I will bless, bless the Lord in the noonday. I will bless, bless the Lord in the evening. I will bless in the Lord. Hour. I will bless the Lord. 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 Oh, 
Somebody lift a hand and tell the Lord thank you one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless you. Be seated if you can. In the presence of the Lord. Bless him at all times. He is good. Well, open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter two. You ready for the word today? Second Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse. 14. 2 Corinthians 2 14 says, You have it? Amen. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. I'm going to talk about winning 
winning. Winning. Repeat after me. I am a winner. And uh, because of the word always in the text, it kind of stands out. We can have a third subject today and say, I always win. I always win. I want you to take your own temperature for a moment, and I'm not talking about the temperature that was taken when you came in at the door. I'm talking about your spiritual, personal temperature, your attitudinal temperature. Because I want to know today, as you think about yourself, nobody else, just yourself, would you say uh, of yourself, are you an optimistic person or are you a pessimistic person? Take your own temperature. We're not talking about anybody else. We're talking about individual analysis. Are you a optimistic person or are you a pessimistic person? Let's define the word so we all can be on the same page. Optimistic means that you are hopeful, you are confident, you are hopeful and confident about your future. Hopeful and confident about your future. That's an optimistic person. Uh, an optimistic person is expecting something good. You're expecting something good. You're expecting good outcomes. And whatever you do, you are expecting it to turn out good. Optimistic people are cheerful and they are positive. Cheerful and positive. On the other hand, pessimistic or a pessimistic person means that no matter what the situation, you see the worst aspects of things, you see the worst aspects of things, and you believe that the worst is gonna happen. You think it all the time, something bad getting ready to happen. And thereby, pessimistic people are gloomy. And they are negative, very negative people. Now, again, don't sit there and think about he show preaching about brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. This morning, the assignment in this portion of the message is to take your own temperature. Now, if you're, if you're pessimistic, please hear me. If you're pessimistic and negative, it's probably due to some things that you have been through in your past. If you're pessimistic, and some people are constantly going through rough things, so because they're always going through something rough and tough, they they're pessimistic because of things they have gone through in their past or even things that you may be going through right now. Some things you've been in the past, been through in the past and going through right now. It can, it can leave you negative. What you've been through can leave you negative and not positive. If you've been through a lot of negative things, it can leave you negative but this morning we want to change perspective because everybody in here today must leave here uh, knowing that you are winning. So we want to change perspective. Perspective is the way you look at something. And when you look at something from a different perspective, it can be the same thing, but it can look different. So therefore, the things you, listen to what I'm going to say, the things you have been through, things you have been through should make you optimistic. The things you have been through, and notice I'm emphasizing the word through. How many of y'all been through some things? The things you have been through should make you optimistic, should make you really positive 
Why should things I've th been through make me optimistic and positive? Because you went through them. Now, I got to wait for some of you for a minute because I can't wait for it to wake you up at midnight. You got to get it right now. You should be optimistic, even though you've been through a lot of things, been through a lot of stuff, had a lot of drama. You still should be optimistic. Why? Because you went through them. Are you hearing me? In other words, you got the victory over the situation. Because you have lived to talk about it. And now you can look back at it as being something that's in your past. Because guess what? The Lord brought you through it. Now, I'm not talking about people you know. This morning, zero in on yourself. I'm not talking about people you know. I'm not talking about some people you knew that you thought were optimistic and they went down anyway. I'm talking about you. Because you have made it through some difficult times. Everybody in here. And, and, and you want to know why you made it through? You made it through because you're a winner. And not only are you a winner, let's bring it to present tense, you are winning. You're winning. Come on, somebody say, I'm winning, I'm winning. Amen. Say with me, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. And I am winning. I am now, some of you said it, but you don't feel it. And let me tell you why you are winning. Let me tell you why you're winning. It's in verse 14. Again, I'm going to read it. The text says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place. You are winning, brothers and sisters, and you're going to win because of God. Because of God. Are you a child of God? God, the text says, always, underline, highlight, circle, do something to the word always. God always causes us, us, to triumph in Christ. All those words are so important. Do you know, do you know where you are right now? You know, most mornings, most Sunday mornings are believer services, believers meetings. If you're not a believer, I give you a chance at the end. But do, do you know, do you know where you are right now? I'm asking a question. Do you know where you are right now? I'm going to tell you where you are. You are in Christ. Uh, I said you're in Christ. When you got born again, when you got born again, you didn't just get saved, but you got in Christ. Now, now, now you got to get this because this morning, everybody in here got in some kind of a vehicle. And let me tell you what you did. You were outside of the vehicle, but you got in it. You hear what I'm saying? You, you got in it. And when you got in it, you were enclosed by the vehicle. And it took you where you came. You got in it. Now the Bible says that, that and you got to grab this, the Bible says that uh, 
that we have put on Christ. My goodness, you didn't hear that. We have actually put on Christ. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit actually baptized us. I'm not talking about water baptism now. I'm talking about Holy Spirit actually baptized. The word baptized means immersed us into the body. What body? The body of Christ. Now, now, you, now you're looking at me. I have a body. But, but see, when you got saved, when you were born again, Holy Spirit took you from outside and he put you inside Christ. Are you listening to me? Now, now, now a, a good example is this morning, nobody in here, nobody in here can see the eggs and grits and sausage I have for breakfast. <laughs> Somebody said, praise God for that. Okay, I can't see it. You know why? Because it's in me. Are you listening to me? It's in me. And, and, and therefore you can't see it, but it's in me. And you got to understand, brothers and sisters, that right now you are in Christ. If you got that, I can go a little further. If you were saved, you are in Christ. When, when you were born again, you didn't just get saved, you got in Christ it. If any man be in Christ, be a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Listen to this, and all things are of God. That's where you are. You are in Christ. If you're saved, wave at me. You're in Christ. You're in Christ. The Bible says some other good things like he that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You are in union with Christ. You are in Christ. The same life that is in Christ is now in you. And you are in him. The same righteousness that is in Christ is in you. We are the righteousness of God in where? In Christ Jesus. The same blessing that's on Christ and in Christ is in you. We are joint as with Christ. Watch this. And the same authority that's in Christ is in you. I said the same authority. Matter of fact, God sees you and me in Christ. Did you hear me? He sees you and me. He sees us. You want to know how God sees you? God sees us in Christ. And we got to get to the point where we see ourselves in Christ. We got to see ourselves in Christ. Verse 14 again says, now thanks be to God. Watch this. And here's, here's where it says, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. In Christ. Everybody that's in Christ is a winner. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Not only that, everybody that's in Christ, I don't care what comes your way, has already won. Christ is, present tense, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and guess what the good news is? We are seated with him. The, the Bible says some powerful things. The Bible says that you were crucified with Christ. The Bible says you are buried with him by baptism. The Bible says we rose with Christ. And now the Bible says now we are seated with Christ in the heavenly place. Are you hearing me? You have joint seating with Christ right now in the heavenly place at the right hand of God. There's something that we haven't grasped yet. And, 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 and one problem, one problem, one reason we haven't grasped it, and the Lord's showing me it, is because, because, because uh, our preaching that we have heard has stuck Jesus at the cross. Jesus 
Jesus is stuck right there. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I've been guilty too. You know, we just preach the cross. And listen, don't get me wrong. Please hear me. The cross is, is, where, is where we, where we uh, uh, the blood was shed for our salvation. The cross is important, but you need to understand, you need to understand that Jesus is no longer on the cross. So, so we got we to bring our preaching now from, from the cross and crucifixion and suffering to reigning. Now, 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 now here's, here's where it gets good because, because the Bible says, all right, he's seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly place. That's the place of power. And the Bible says we are in Christ. So the Bible says, now watch this, the Bible says, let me tell you something, let me tell you something, uh, ain't nobody going to crucify him no more. He got up, and he ain't going down no more. And the Bible says that he, he went to hell and preached, and he led captivity captive, and, and he led a, a victory, victory parade. And now he is seated in the place of power. The right hand is the place of power. And, and now here's the good news. Don't miss this. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Do you miss that? I said, as he is. Not as he was on the cross. See, 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 a whole lot of folk, whole lot of folk, whole lot of folk, whole lot of folk, whole lot of folk are struggling and weak and, and, and barely, just barely getting alone. Because you don't see yourself the way God sees. God sees you in the place of power. God sees you in the place of authority. God sees you seated as he is, as he is, as he is. So are we in this world. As he is, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, as he is, so are we in this world. So the beginning of, of victory, the beginning of victory, the, bit, the beginning of perpetual victory. I'm talking about perpetual victory where you come to the place where no matter what faces you, you have the audacity, the Holy Ghost audacity to look at it in the eye and say, I always win. What? He always. <laughs> and I looked up the Greek, I looked up the Greek, I, I checked it out. You know what always means? Always. You missed that, you missed that. Always. So begin the victory is to see yourself the way God sees you. See, and we're in such a victorious position. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says, when you fall into divers temptations, count it all joy. Count it all joy. And the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says uh, that, that, that anytime you are tested, anytime you are, the word is tempted, anytime you are tested with the situations and the priorities of life, anytime you are tested, uh, uh, the Bible says something. The Bible says uh, that he will not allow you. He won't let you be tempted above that that you are able. So along with every temptation, he also gives an exit ramp. So with the temptation, he always makes a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So every time I come into a test, every time I come into a trial, I just need to be patient. I just need to be patient, enduring. 
Because right along with the test, there is an exit ramp. Because all I got to do is stand. If I stand there for, what are you standing there for? I'm standing for what I'm standing there for. I'm standing for the victory. So we need to declare that we are what God says we are. We need to say, present tense, I have what God says I have. Not only that, I can do what God says I can do. And then you know what I start doing? I start taking steps of faith. Faith means to act like it. Watch this, even if you don't feel it. That's the problem with saints. We're waiting to feel something. And if you act like it, you'll feel something different later on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come here, lady, with the issues of blood. Well, I pressed through the crowd. I reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And then the Bible says, then I felt something in my body. Because you need to understand Actions are greater than emotions. See, that's why uh, 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 don't, con don't condemn nobody for shedding tears. Go on and cry. Get it over with. But then when you finish crying, act like the word is true. Stand up. Shake yourself off and say, I'm going to stand on what God said I am. I cried my last tear yesterday. I'm through crying about that now. Now I'm going to win. Because he always. See, you ain't felt this yet because some of y'all been through the through. Uh-huh. You've been through the through and you here this morning as a living testimony that the devil took a big shot at me, but I'm still here. I'm still standing here. I'm clothed in my right mind. And I'm a witness that he always. Somebody get the audacity and say, I always win, I always win. Why? Because he always causes me to try. Somebody take a praise break and give God praise. Now listen to this. You know what one translation says? One translation says this, and some of y'all gonna feel this. One translation says, God makes me win. I need about two witnesses right here. You know what God will do if you throw in the towel? He'll throw it right back at you. He said, my children don't give up. They don't quit. No quitting here. No quitting here. Yeah, it's tough. It's rough. But, 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 but you got to take a stand. Are you hearing me? One translation said, God, God makes me win. He makes me win. One translation says, Jesus Christ makes me win in everything, everywhere. He causes me to triumph in every place, everywhere. Another translation said, God, God leads me and causes me to win in everything. That's why the Bible said, in everything, give thanks. Because he gonna, he gonna, he's going to lead you to the place where you win in everything. And, and, and God is going to put you in the victory parade. Yeah. 
victory parade. So you don't, you don't even know what happens when you come on Sunday. When you come through those doors on Sunday, when you come down that road in those cars, this is parade season. They're having parades everywhere. You need to understand, it's, it's a caravan of victory. As you ride your car down the road, as you get out your car and walk from the parking lot and walk through those doors, it's a victory parade. Yep, 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 yep. This week I've had some tough trials. This week I've had some touchy situations. This week there have been some hard things I had to go through. But I'm back, devil. I'm back at the house of God. And right now I'm going to give him praise. That's why every time we come in this, in this building, it ought to be a praise party. I had some tough stuff this week, but I'm back. It looked like I was going down for a minute, but I'm back. God calls me to triumph everywhere, every time. And see, here's what you gotta stop doing. I'm through, you gotta stop doing this. You gotta stop talking about the devil. If I can extract anything, out of your life it's a mouth that talks about the devil oh the devil's in my family listen to you the devil's in my finances the devil's trying to take my help I'm gonna tell you something this morning there's only one kind of devil a defeated devil I can't get no help there They ain't but one kind of devil. They ain't but one kind of devil. I'm going to pause for the call. They ain't but one kind of devil. I, I'm sorry for what you may have heard in church. I'm sorry about folk exalting the devil. But I want to tell you something. There's only one kind of devil. That's a defeated devil. They ain't but one kind. Look at your name. They ain't but one kind. They ain't but one kind. I need to read you a scripture, Colossians 2 and 15. I need to read it to you. I got to read it to you, and then we're going home. Colossians 2 and 15, hear what it says. Colossians 2 and 15. Turn that quickly. Keep your finger there at Corinthians, because we're coming right back. Colossians 2, 15. Settle this once and for all in your life. Settle this. I don't care what it looks like, because see, the enemy can, he can manipulate the scene around. If he can get you caught up in what you see, he'll drive you nuts. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. You got to learn how to ignore what you see and stand on what God said. Only one kind of devil, that's a defeated devil. This settles it once and for all. Colossians 2, 15. You got it? And, is that what it says? Yes. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Yes. All right, well, I talk my pastor. Let me read it to you from the NIV. NIV says, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus spoiled, defeated, the principalities and powers and he made a show of them. So what does that mean? That means that every kind of spirit you people from Green County need to really hear me. Y'all believe in all them spirits. You need to hear me. Ain't but one spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Huh? And greater is he. That's in me. Than he that's in the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Little children. 
You have already overcome them. I can't go no further. You have already overcome. When did I overcome when Christ got up? Bible said if they had known, they'd have never crucified him. If they had just known, they said, no, don't, don't you kill him. Because the Bible says, the Bible says Jesus spoiled or, and defeated the principalities and power. He made a show of them. So here it is, here it is, here it is. Now here it is. Every kind of spirit that can come against you don't have no weapons. Uh-huh. Uh-oh, I just hit a religious, a religious spot in here. Every, let me calm down. Every kind of spirit that can come against you don't have no weapons. You know, you know all the enemy has wows. And that word means tricks and deception. How can he have weapons if Jesus took them? Come on now, let go of that religion you learned. Are you hearing me? Every kind of spirit that can come against you, Jesus disarmed them. And not only did he disarm them, but he stripped them. And then he exposed them. Bad enough to be stripped, but then to be exposed. When Jesus got up from the dead, he led a victory parade. Are you hearing me? Why? To demonstrate. He wanted to demonstrate something. He, see, he, want, he wanted to demonstrate something. Everybody say demonstrate something. Now, here's, here's the key. Here's what you got to know. So, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, watch this, shows off through you. See, you part of the victory parade. Now, let me tell you what's going on so you won't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you and think something strange has happened unto you. Listen to this, church. Listen to me. Listen to me. Suppose someone came in this church today and they had a big belt on and they said, I am the heavyweight champion of the world. I'm undefeated. Watch this now, watch this. And then I walk up to him and I say, who have you fought? And then he says, nobody. <laughs> I say, you can't be no champion. You've never been in a fight. Somebody over there got it. See, see, you got to be in a fight to win. If you ain't been in no fights, you can't say you're a winner. So the only way you can be a valid champion is somewhere along the line you had to meet Goliath. Because the devil sells wolf tickets and says, I bet you can't whoop this. But you already know it is a fixed fight. And you know that he always, he always, I said he always, Causes. He makes you win. Huh? 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 Uh, so, so now, now, my brothers and my sisters, now you know what the fight was all about. I better check and make sure I'm on the right church. How many of y'all been in some fights? Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been in some fights. You've been in some health fights. You don't want nobody to know, but you've been in some home fights. You've been in some fights with your cheerings. They cutting the food. You've been in some fights. Now you know what the fight is all about. There's got to be something you came up against 
to whoop. So let me help you with your, with your religion. Hold on, brother. Let me help you with your religion. There ain't no such thing as conflict-free Christianity. You're going to have some battles. Come on, talk to me. But the Bible says you can fight the good fight. What's a good fight? A good fight is a fight you know you're going to win. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. It's a good fight one you know you're going to win. You know it's already fixed. The fight is fixed. And I'm just in the fight so God can show off. That's why I told you a few weeks ago, that's why you got to learn to give God the glory. You can't go around here being a secret agent Christian. God done brought you from a, a mighty long way. And you going around with your lips pressed together. Won't give God the glory. Won't tell nobody what God has done for you. You'd rather give the doctor credit than give God credit. Huh? You rather give somebody that gave you a loan some some money. You rather give them credit. Oh my my third cousin. The Bible says that if you give, he'll make men give to your bosom. So things come against you, so you have something to whoop. And see, so you still missed it because you're sitting here today. The reason you're sitting here today because there's some things that you and God have whooped. Amen. It was hard. It was fiery. But the reason I'm optimistic is because he brought me out. And I didn't even smell like smoke. Huh? The reason I'm here this morning looking so good is because God brought me out. And praise God, I don't look like what I've been through. I need to find five folk in here. I don't need but five. I need to find five folk who will say, thank God, I don't look like what I've been through. Because it wasn't nobody but God that brought me through. I'm still looking for five folk. I just need five. I just need five that stand and say, I don't look like what I've been through. I, I, I've been through a whole lot. I know I look good this morning. I know I'm smelling good. I know I'm riding good. I know I'm dressed up. But I thank God it wasn't nobody but God. God wasn't brought me through. And I've had some hard trials. I've had some real tribulation. I've had times when I didn't know whether I was going to make it but God. Yeah, and I'm going there. I'm going there many. Many, many, many. I said many, many, many. I said many, many, many. I said many, many, many. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord. I said, but the Lord. I said, but the Lord. I said, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody here that's had many afflictions? But well, aren't you glad that the Lord stuck his butt in there? But the Lord! I said, but the Lord. I said, find somebody. And don't get too close to them and tell them I'm one of them butt people. I could have been dead. I could have lost my mind. I could have lost everything I had, but the Lord, I said, but the Lord, I'm looking good this morning. You want to know why, but the Lord delivered me out of them all. Somebody give God glory right now. So here's what the text says. I'm not making this up. You standing up, so don't sit back down. Here's what the text says. The text says, now, he says, now. Amen. 
there's something I got to do. It says now that he delivered me. I told you King James scriptures are sometimes written backwards. You have to read them from the end to the front. Because now we're back at the beginning of the text. Because the text starts with now. There's something I need to do now. There's something I need to do now. Uh, 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 I just don't need to sit down with my arms folded. I don't need to go to church and sit down like I'm smelling garlic. There's something I need to do now. <laughs> Has the Lord done anything for you in the past? Has he made you win? When it looked like odds were against you. When it looked like the deck was stacked against you. When enemies were all around you. When you were sick and seemed like you couldn't get well. Well now! Now there's something you need to do. I said now there's something you need to do. I don't want you to miss this because you got a part and God has a part. God always causes you to triumph. And I'm taking my time to do. Now the Bible says now thanks. That's what the Bible says. Now thanks be unto God which always calls me to win. I owe God a thanks. I want to find two people in here today. It may not be but two, but I want to find at least two people that know it wasn't nobody but God. And know now you owe God a thanks. Is there anybody here that knows they owe God a thanks? Lift your hand in the air like you really don't care and say thanks be to you, God. It wasn't nobody but you that brought me. It wasn't nobody but you that healed me. I could have lost my mind, but now, now be thanks to God. Anybody here can say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you how you brought me. I thank you how you taught me. I thank you what you've done for me. Praise God, you brought me out. That's why every week we tell him what we're doing. Every week we're in the victory parade. Been through something during the week, everybody's standing. Been through something this week, but now I'm back. Thank God for now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Weeping may endure for a night, but I thank God Sunday's coming. And if I can get to the house of God, where the rest of the saints are and I can mingle my voices with them I thank God weeping endured for a night but I thank God that joy I said joy I said joy came on Sunday morning anybody here got joy I tell you what I get joy every time I think about it everything he's done for me He always. Somebody throw your head back. Say, I always win. I always win. And I've been through some fights. Huh? Been through some fights. <laughs> this same Paul, he said something. He said, he said, he said, I got some marks. You know, sometimes you get in a fight, you'll come out with some scars. But Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I've been in some fights. And this same Paul wrote this text, this same preacher, he said, listen, he says, he says, God will make you win. Paul talked about some of the stuff he'd been through. I've been shipwrecked, I've been left for beaten, I've been left for dead. But God. (laughs) 
God calls me to win. You always win, saints. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Pastor Lawson. You know, I've been through your way. Hush, you here? I didn't used to agree with this, but there's an element of truth in it. What didn't kill you made you stronger. Have y'all been through some days? I know I'm stronger now. Come here, Marvin Sapp. I never could have made it. God brought me through that. And that's why saints, that's why saints, there's, there's, there's no room, no room now for secret Christians. Huh. This is a day when you really got to tell it. In this day when folk, when folk think he's out of business, you got to tell it. Wasn't nobody but God. See, everybody, you know what, you know what, you know what? Everybody thinks that you always been where you are now. I was thinking the other night, my dad is here this morning. My grandmother lived two doors down from us when I was growing up, right there in front of the tabernacle on University Street. She lived two doors down. My aunt lived next door. My grandmama lived in the next house. And I'm glad I'm just old enough, just old enough to have experienced some things and know some things because some, some nights I had to spend with her. And it was a different experience at her house than it was at mine. I'm not going to bore you with this story, but my, my father's brother and sister got together and bought her a gas stove, and you know what she did? She said, put it right beside the wood stove in the kitchen. You ain't going to hear nothing I'm saying. And you realize she wouldn't use the gas stove? She'd make a fire to cook in the summertime. And some of y'all know nothing about this, but I'm going to help you. See, because I ain't always been where I am. Winter time, boy, she'd, she'd get that pot belly stove, but one room in the house had no heat. Then grandma would get there by that stove. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. She turned her back. She cooked this side a while. She said, Come on, boy, you better get up here and get warm before you get in the bed. Then she turned around, cooked this side a while. Lord no, Chanette, I tried to get every bit of water out of me before I got in that bed that I could. <laughs> I be wanting to go home so bad, my parents be going out for the night, and she said, you better go to the bathroom, because if you get up in the middle of the night, got to go. There was a jar. A little porcelain-like jar. And you didn't want to go to the bathroom nowhere because it was cold. And under the house, Roy, under the house there was a there was a cold bin. Before you go to bed, before it get dark, she'd make you go down there and she had a long hole and you go down there and she'd go down there and fill this can up full of coal and boy, I open that coal bin up and boy, spider web be all around the top. And I'd be saying, I can't reach it. It's too far back. Go under there, boy, and get it. Go under there and get it. I don't say spiders up here. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But it's okay. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, Lord had brought you. Yeah. And through those hard tests and trials, he, you know why you're here? He made you win. Because on the other end, he wants a thanks. He wants a thanks. 
So in this day when everybody being cool and everybody being coy and everybody being, you know, shy, you can't be shy. You got to, you got to give him thanks. Because God calls you to win. Are you hearing me? Somebody says to me, I promise I'll let you go home and say, God calls me to win. He made me win. And I thank God that I am a winner. And right here, right now, I decree and declare I always win in Christ. Give him a winner's praise in here today. Give him better praise than that. Come on, give him high praise. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet. And I'm going to tell you, there's some more fights ahead. But the same God that brought you through before will bring you through again. Can I get a witness? Bible said when you fall in divers temptations, just count it joy. How can I count it joy and I'm getting ready to go through a test or try? Because you know something. You know God going to bring you through. Every time. I'm going to let you go after this, but if he brought you through before, come on, give him another praise in here today. Everyone is standing, everyone standing. If you're saved and you know it, lift both hands and let me look at them all over the building if you're already saved. Listen, listen to me good. Hands are up all over this building. If you're here today, and you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to stop this service just long enough to get you on the victory church train. If you're here, you can raise your hand today and say, I'm saved. I have received Christ as my Savior. I've been born again. Won't you make a quality decision today? We're living in perilous times. Tests and trials are on the way. Are you hearing me? And he's not just going to snatch you out of everything. He's going to take you through some things. Because that gives him glory. If you couldn't raise your hand, you can put them down now. Won't you come up here and let me pray with you this morning? I do it in a social distance way, but you need to be saved. You need Jesus in your life. And if you're here today and you're not a part of a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, I'll take a few minutes to stand down here after service this morning. If you want to be a part of a church that's going to teach you the word of God. No nonsense. The uncut truth, which will make you free. If you're here today, I'll be here after the service just for a few moments. I'll stand right here and wait for you. You want to talk to me about being a member of Jump and Run Church. The Lord will teach you how to live and you have victory in your life. Can I get a witness? Everyone standing, we're ready to go now. Pastor Dell, you got some announcements you want to give?